Dear beloved in the Lord, may you know the strength and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, His gracious forgiveness of sin, and the promise that one day you shall rest secure with Him forever. Amen. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Lord, we thank and praise you for the life that we have in your name, for opportunities that you have given us to share our faith, to worship together in this house. Lord, we pray that always we would see your hand at work in our hearts and our lives, that you would guide us and direct us, that we would know the peace that we are your children and the hope that one day we shall know full restoration when we rest secure with you. This we pray in the most powerful and merciful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I suspect many of you are familiar with the book, Heaven is for Real. It was also made into a movie, so if you didn't read the book, maybe you saw the movie. The book was actually written by Todd Burpo, who is a Christian pastor, who is the father of a little child, Colton Burpo. Now, Colton had what we call a near-death experience. He was being operated on, and he was in the midst of, uh, of, of that operation, and he died on the table. During that time that he was on the table, well, there was this moment where he was given a perspective into heaven. His father writes about many occasions where he saw the th events of heaven, things in heaven that he couldn't have known otherwise. But miraculously, the Lord healed him, and he was able to, the surgery was able to be finished, and he was able to come back to life, if you will. Now, I know there's been a great deal of criticism in the world, uh, a lot of people who say it's sensational, or people who will say that it's too good to be true. Personally, I'm not one of them because I've talked to people who have had near-death experiences. I've, I've heard of other people who have had near-death experiences. And so I know that the Lord can do some amazing things. But what I really want you to focus on today is the miraculous healing that God did in little Colton's life. You know, we hear about healings like that, and it does make us think. It stops us for a moment as we think about the fact that God still does some amazing things in our world today. We hear these stories of the, Old, or the, oh, the New Testament and the Old Testament of people who have been healed by God, people who were near death, people who were about to die, who there was no hope for, and God heals them. How many times have you read the account from Mark chapter 2? This paralyzed man lowered down into the house and God restored him. Not even medical science can do that today, can they? Many of us know people who are ailing from paral paralyzed limbs, who cannot move their arms, and cannot move their legs. And Jesus, in his almighty power, was able to restore that man. We hear so many stories about the apostles doing the same thing. Jesus healing one soul after the next, restoring these people. In fact, these stories are meant to strengthen our faith. We're meant to know with full certainty that Jesus does heal. Notice I didn't say that he did heal, but that he does heal. In fact, Paul, as he's looking at the ministry of God in our lives, the healing ministry of God, listen to his words. This is from Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the re revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Paul, such confidence, confidence that we should have, that Jesus delivers us from all of our burdens, that Jesus will deliver us from our sin and has done so with his death, death on the cross. Confidence in our Lord. And yet, how many of us struggle to have that confidence? How many of you struggle to have that same confidence in the confidence Paul expresses in the healing hand of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? How many of you have spent hours on the, flo on the floor kneeling before the Lord, praying that He would deliver your loved one from whatever ailment she is suffering? How many of you have found yourselves spending hour after hour visiting someone in the hospital, praying that the Lord would ease their suffering, deliver them from their agony in whatever the Lord, way the Lord may see fit? How many of you have felt 
have felt that you that the Lord did not hear your prayers? How many of you felt that that, that confidence slipping away? And even more so, we feel that confidence slip away when we hear so-called evangelists say, well, your faith wasn't strong enough. Or their faith healings turn out to be a fraud. Do we have that same confidence? You know, we look today at our gospel lesson from Mark chapter 2. And Jesus himself even mentions the confidence of those four men and the one man on the mat. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. It's almost as Jesus himself is saying that it was the strength of their faith that brought about his healing hand. (laughs) And how many times maybe have we wondered about that ourselves? How many times have we heard those words and thought to ourselves, well, maybe I didn't spend quite enough time in prayer. Maybe my heart wasn't in quite the right place. And it produces in us questions of why. Now, we've talked about those questions of why before, haven't we? Because it's not just when people are suffering that we ask those questions of why, but when things don't go our way in our lives, when things don't seem to be happening as we expect them to happen, we ask those same why questions. And those why questions, they in and of themselves are not a bad thing. We should feel comfortable to go to the Lord with every question. But it's oftentimes what happens after those why questions. The doubt that fills our hearts. The questions of God. Can you... Is he, can he really deliver someone who's sick? Is he really working to restore this creation? Or a lot of people respond with nihilism and say, well, whatever will be, will be. And that's hopeless, isn't it? Now, I can't answer your why questions. I can't tell you that it's going to be all right. But what I can do is point you to God's Word. And in God's Word we have hope. In God's Word, we have peace. And in God's Word, we have strength. In God's Word, we see the way our Lord deals with us, the way, he, the way He loves us and cares for us. We see the compassion that He has, and we can see the healing that He will do for each one of us, our Father who cares for us more than any earthly father could. Our Heavenly Father loves and cares for us. And let's go back to that reading from Mark for this morning. In Mark, we see two forms of healing take place, don't we? We first of all see a spiritual healing take place. Son, your sins are forgiven. But secondly, and I don't think we should miss this, Jesus says right near the end of the reading, take up your mat, go on home. As in, you can walk now. The physical healing took place. Now that spiritual healing, I think sometimes we take that for granted. Because we talk about that spiritual healing all the time. We talk about the way that God has sent Christ into our world to reunite us with Him so that we might come before Him with every prayer and petition. We take for granted what it means that Jesus came into our world to restore us as His children. But we shouldn't. Because in that truth, we have hope. We have comfort and we have promise. We have promised that this is not how it's always going to be. We have promised that the Lord on His day, the Lord's day, will restore all things. And that Jesus came to begin that restoration process. You know, many of you may be familiar with this text. But I love this one text from Isaiah chapter 11. Because it describes the restoration of creation in a, in a different way that maybe sometimes we don't even think about. Isaiah says, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah chapter 11, 800 years, nearly 800 years before Christ came. Isaiah knew the promise that Jesus came to bring. The promise that although sin had entered the world, although sin had corrupted God's perfect creation, that God would make all things new. That God would wipe away all the death and all the tears. That God would wipe away all the pain and suffering. And on His day, we would restore creation to that beautiful image that Isaiah paints for us. And that is the hope that we as Christians hold on to. 
the hope that every believer has, that spiritually Christ has come to heal us, that we can come to our Father. In fact, He has sent His Son that we can bring every prayer and petition to Him. That relationship has been healed by Christ. And in fact, every Sunday we celebrate that healing, don't we? We celebrate it with the body and blood of Christ, the healing that comes in the Lord's Supper, the forgiveness of our sins, the hope and promise that is merely a foretaste of the feast that is to come. But in the Gospel that reading, it wasn't just about that spiritual healing, was it? It was about that physical healing as well. Now, I know a lot of you have probably been taught through the years, maybe or heard through the years, that physical healings by God, well, that stopped with the apostles. That that was only a first century ministry. Now, I challenge you to show me in Scripture where that is. Because I do not believe that is a scriptural mandate. I do not believe that is true in God's Word. I have not found where God said those physical healings stop after the first century. In fact, I firmly believe that Jesus came to preach, to teach, and to heal, and that He has not stopped that ministry. In fact, in Matthew, in the Gospel, as He's recording the ministry of Jesus, listen to His word. Jesus went throughout all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. Jesus taught. Jesus preached. And Jesus healed. Those were central points to his ministry. Jesus teaches us by his word today. Jesus strengthens our faith through the preaching of his Holy Spirit working in, the, in our lives. And Jesus continues to heal. And I hope that you see the truth of that. That Jesus did not just abandon us once he went into heaven, but he continues to heal. He continues to work in our hearts and our lives. So often in the world we live in, we live in a world that has turned our back on, on recognizing the, the healing that Jesus does. We write off the fact that a doctor has intellect or, or has the gift or ability to repair a, a, in a surgery repair a, a broken heart a, a heart that has a, a torn a torn blood vessel or or the fact that a doctor can mend together a broken bone and where did that intellect come from where did that understanding the human body come from well if we believe that our lord created us if he knit us together in the first place we know that that knowledge came from him but even more than that how many times have you heard people say it was divine intervention. It must have been something the Lord did. Even doctors say that truth, even if they don't necessarily believe it. But how many of us as Christians have said, wow, the fact that that person survived, the fact that that person was healed, there was only one way that could be. Jesus. James, the brother of Jesus in his epistle, he had confidence that we as Christian brothers and sisters, that we should not give up on that healing ministry of Christ. James, in his epistle, wrote, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone among you cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Notice what James does. He sets right next to that spiritual healing, the physical healing. Just like Jesus did the spiritual healing and the physical healing together, so, al so also James recognized that that is how God continues to work. Now one thing I want you to be aware of is that when Jesus heals, that there is a reason, there is a purpose. First of all, it is because he loves and cares for each one of us. Enough to count the hairs on our heads. Enough to know the number of cells in our body. But secondly, right at the end of our gospel reading this morning, Mark makes this remark. And the man rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. When Jesus heals in our lives, it's to glorify the name of the Father. When Jesus heals in our lives, it is to stir and create faith in the hearts of non-believers. When Jesus heals, 
we see God's hand of glory, his restorative power for creation at work. And we should not be blind to that. Because when Jesus heals, he does so in amazing ways. Ways that help to strengthen our faith. Ways that help us to know that he is in control of this broken creation. Sometimes the healing that Jesus does is not what we pray for. And you need to know that as well. When sin entered the world, so also death entered the world. And we know death to be a terribly awful thing. We know death to be a painful thing as we lose a loved one, a friend, someone we care for. But when Jesus died on the cross, when he rose from the grave on that first Easter morning, he declared victory over death. He didn't make death okay. He declared victory over death. And he gave us the hope and promise that although we shall die, we shall live on the cross. He gave us the promise that one day we shall have new life and we will know the fullness of his healing. On the cross, he redeemed us that we might conquer death as well. That although we shall die, we shall be reunited in His holy presence. And if you know the words of Revelation, you know the image that John paints that Christ has given him, that there will be neither tears on the face, nor broken hearts, nor broken lives, but we shall be in the presence of our Lord. And sometimes that is the healing that God does. That is the healing that He might do in each of our lives, unless He comes first. But I want you to know that Jesus' healing ministry did not end with the apostles that Jesus continues to strengthen us and heal us spiritually. He continues to heal us physically. He continues to walk with us emotionally. May you know that you can bring every burden to him, for he has invited you. Cast your burdens onto me, for I care for you. Jesus loves you, and he will heal you. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have given us the healing of forgiveness. Although we did not deserve your forgiveness, your mercy, although we did not des deserve your healing, that you have entered into our lives and that you have placed your healing hand upon us, forgiving us of every one of our sins, cleansing us from all unrighteousness, and making us new. Lord, we do pray that you would be with each of us, even as our bodies decay and grow older, even as we grow weaker and even as we, we see the, the, the side effects of sin in our lives, Lord, we pray that we would never cease to turn to You, that we would never cease to grow in our faith, be strengthened in the sure assurance that You are our healing God, that as You preached, as You taught, that You also continue to heal us. Lord, we pray that You would give us confidence and boldness in our prayer, that we would not grow weary of praying for healing, but that we would seek Your healing. Lord, we pray that even in the midst of our trials, we would know your peace. May we know your peace that is beyond all understanding. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.